This is a study from Leviticus chapters 1 through chapter 7. And the whole focus of this study is to take a look at how uh, the sacrifices of animals, lambs, goats, and cattle, pointed to Jesus. And in this particular study, we're looking at um, the question, why were there male and female sacrifices? Uh, you will find in these chapters that there were female sacrifices um, specifically um, in the Levitical Code uh, five or six times. And then there were a few more than that for male sacrifices of animals. So um, it's an interesting study. I had not heard that there were female sacrifices be it until I found this around 2015. And I've been kind of looking at it and studying it off and on since then. So as we begin this study... Let's come to a quote from Patriarchs and Prophets about the first few verses of Leviticus 1. The sacrificial, the sacrificial system committed to Adam was also perverted by his descendants. Superstition, idolatry, cruelty, and licentiousness corrupted the simple service that God had appointed. Through long intercourse with idolaters, the people of Israel had mingled many heathen customs with their worship. So, therefore, the Lord gave them at Sinai definite instruction concerning the sacrificial service. This is on page 364 of Patriarchs and Prophets. So, the instruction in the book of Leviticus about the sacrifices came after all of this um, perversion that had occurred uh, from the descendants of Adam, including what happened leading up to the flood, including that as you study the archaeology of the tribes and nations around uh, Israel uh, in, in the land of Canaan and as, as you read in the Bible they were sacrificing uh, ch infants, children and young adults both male and female and those same children and young, and young adults were forced into male and, and female prostitution so it really was a perverted system and God was bringing them back to something that was holistic, to something that was pointing to Jesus as our Messiah, as our sacrifice for sin. And in this, there were male and female sacrifices. Why? What was God trying to say here? So let's start taking a look. I outlined it here and also here. So starting with the first chapter of Leviticus. There were two times in this chapter that uh, men were um, told to have male sacrifices of animals. So in Leviticus 1 verse 2, 3, 4, and 10, uh, this sacrifice was uh, for any man who brought an offering to the Lord, and it was of the cattle, the herd, and the flock. It could be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, or it was to be a burnt sacrifice. They offered a male without blemish, and it had to be offered of his own voluntary will, the voluntary will of the person bringing the animal. Um, and then... And it also uh, made an atonement for him. So we have these elements of this. Free will, atonement, and without blemish. And this was repeated. When something's repeated twice, it's significant. It was repeated in verse 10. And this was from the sheep or the goats of the flocks. And this was to be a burnt sacrifice, a male without blemish. So 
We've heard of that before, that that would be a sacrifice that represented Christ. Most of us have heard about that, right? But we haven't heard about female sacrifices. So before we read in chapter 3 about, about female sacrifices, um, just want to mention that chapter 2 talks about the meat offering, and this really was an offering that uh, was of corn, wheat, barley, uh, fine flour, uh, frankincense, and um, those type of things. So that's something to read. That's a whole separate uh, study that I'm not going to do today. Then you come to chapter 3, and we have peace offerings. Peace offerings were uh, from the herd, and it could be a male or a female animal, but it had to be without blemish. And then, this is in verse 1, verse 6, Apostle says it a second time, Every oblation or offering of the meat offering shall you season... Oh, wait a minute, I got it wrong there. Here we go. <laughs> I got it wrong. Okay, um, verse 6, the, a second time, which is a repeat, showing the significance of it, was a peace offering... Unto the Lord from the flock, it was male or female, had to be without blemish. Then it mentions about laying, about a lamb. And this lamb was burnt on the altar. And then in verse 12, it says, And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And there's no mention of the gender of the animal. So when the first and second animal in chapter 3 were male or female, either way, then the progression would indicate that chapter tw 2, I mean that verse 12 is also male or female, even though it's not mentioning the gender. And it says... Verse 17, it shall be a perpetual statute for your generations throughout all your dwellings that you eat neither fat nor blood. So there were some health issues that, that were being illustrated there. So I'm going to come to another quote here. Because here we have three times in this chapter that the animal could be male or female. It doesn't say how or why. That would be... Made, that decision was made as to which gender, but they were male or female animals. And um, in the first commentary, first uh, book of the Bible commentaries, in pa uh, page 1110, paragraph 4, become familiar with Levitical law. We are to become familiar with Levitical law in all its bearings, for it contains rules that must be obeyed. It contains the instruction that, if studied, will enable us to understand better the rule of faith and practice that we are to follow in our dealings with one another. No so has any excuse for being in darkness. Those who receive Christ by faith will receive also power to become sons of God. So... This is pretty strict. I mean, become familiar with what it says in Leviticus, and uh, if we do this, we'll find rules of faith and practice, or rules that must be obeyed. What is this talking about? It's not talking about repeating the sacrifices, because the sacrifices ended with the cross. But it's talking about some other things that we need to learn here, including that we need to learn to understand that there were both male and female sacrifices and that this meant something. So we come to chapter 4 and we have sins of or through ignorance and it talks about both male and female sacrifices in these in, in chapter 4. So starting with the the sacrifices of male animals, the sin of, sin of or through ignorance. Leviticus chapter 4, verse 3, it was a bullock. A bullock is a male, um, ox, 
or cattle. And it was seven times, the blood was sprinkled seven times uh, by the priest. Seven times has to do with Leviticus chapter 24, 25, and 26. Um, then we come to, in verses 13 and 14, again, it's bullock. And again, the blood is, sinkled, is sprinkled seven times for an atonement. And these sacrifices were for the priests and for the whole congregation. And in Leviticus 4, verse 22, it mentions a third time, which was the same sacrifice, and it was for a ruler. Um, so, a male sacrifice, in this case, of a ex more expensive animal, a bullock or a similar animal, was for a ruler or for the whole congregation or and was to make an atonement. Now, let's go to... The female sacrifices found in chapter 4 of Leviticus, also for sins of ignorance. This was um, found in Leviticus 4, 27, 28, 31, 32, and 35. And this was a female goat or lamb. And it had to be an animal that was without blemish, and it was for atonement. And it was also for the sins of ignorance. So, we have, I'm going to point here, um, so far, we find totally, as we read these chapters, female offerings five or six times and male offerings seven or ten times. We find that there are some roles that were uh, in this. There was the role of economics, a more expensive animal, like a bullock, which was male, uh, was for the entire congregation, the priest, the ruler, and likely there were fewer in number of these type of sacrifices. Then there was the uh, animals that were sacrificed on a daily basis. These were for the common people. Like, likely there were a higher number. They were less expensive, although still expensive. And these were female animals. So let's come back here and look at what happened in chapter 5. In chapter 5, there were was a trespass sin through ignorance sacrifice. And this was against the commandments. That's a sin against the commandments. In chapter 5, verses 15 and 18, it mentions a ram, a male animal. And in uh, chapter 5, verses 1, 4, 5, and 6, it mentions the voice of swearing. If you even heard someone swear, uh, it was a trespass, you, and you, you, had, you made an atonement for it through the sacrifice. And this was a female animal that, that this was, sacrifice was for. And then we come to Leviticus 6, verses 2 through 7. And there was a sacrifice, a trespass offering of a ram, which was a male animal, and it was made uh, for any lie or deception. So there you have a number of sacrifices. So we've counted them up. I added them up. No gender, if no gender is mentioned, it was likely a male or female animal, depending on context. Bullock or ram, likely male, four of times. We counted it all up. You can look there. There were male offerings between seven to ten times based on the context, and female offerings five to six times. And in, ch in, verse, in chapter seven, it, there, it talks about the role of health, where uh, they were forbidden to eat fat, fat from animals or any animal that died by themselves and no blood, they could not eat the blood with the animal. They could not eat blood in any way. These are health issues. So I'm going to read one more quote, and then I'm going to close this. The most important part of the daily ministration was the service performed in behalf of individuals. The repentant sinner brought his offering to the door of the tabernacle,
and placing his hand upon the victim's head, confessed his sins, thus in figure transferring them from himself to the innocent sacrifice. <laughs> 